what's going on guys it's cryptic tmg and i'm back with a brand new video this time we're in the audi r8 and we're going to be going around circuit of the americas and this video is going to be a little bit different it's going to be more of a race setup um people have been asking me for a setup for this track and i've also been getting some requests to make a sort of more of a race setup so i'll try to kill two birds with one stone and um see what we can do around this track and mainly when i'm when i'm whenever i'm making a setup um the first thing I normally do is straight away to switch to the hard tires. Most most circuits, uh, most track conditions always sort of lean towards the hard tires, especially for races. If you're going to be doing sort of more than five, six laps, you pretty much you want to be on hard. So, I mean, there's there's very few situations where you're going to need soft tires. Maybe if the track temperatures down are like 52 Fahrenheit or something like that, then you might want to run soft. But as you can see at austin track temperature 143 fahrenheit that's way too hot for softs you probably won't even get through the first sector without the softs overheating so yeah we're gonna stick to the uh hard tires um i'm just gonna set it to default because i actually have made the setup for this track already but just sort of to give you guys what i do first what i change first whenever i get into a car the first things i sort of do and the first thing i will change will be the steering ratio normally run it around 10.5 or, or 10 for me anything above 11 the car just feels like it doesn't rotate it doesn't turn in so um yeah i'm gonna leave it on 10.5 um just to make sure i'm on the hard tires which i think automatic by weather will put you on the hard tires anyway but i'm gonna make sure it's on the hard tires um i'm gonna put the fuel up to about 95 that's that's pretty much what we'd run if we if i was doing the aor race i pretty much put it around 95 um we're gonna leave the gear ratios for now differential um if you don't know how the differential uh power ramp and coast ramp work basically the higher you put the power ramp then the less wheel spin you're gonna get but obviously with that you're gonna be not as not not as aggressive out of the corners so if there's if you can handle the wheel spin you want to run it lower because it's going to give you a bigger push out of the corners but if you for instance if you're racing in the rain or something like that you want you want the power amp to be as high as possible because you get less wheel spin the coast is sort of the opposite way around if you so if you if you don't want the car to sort of be stepping out under braking and stuff like that you'll run the coast as, as low as possible but if you if you're fine and you feel like you can handle a bit of rear rotation then you have the coast sort of higher up but me i'm going to stick the coast around 30 i'm going to put the power ramp to around 75 i normally run it between 70 and 80 anyway but i'll put it at 75 um other than that what else would i change straight away probably probably the brake pressure i'd bring down a little bit um and also brake balance is far too rearward for me so i'm gonna stick that to about 60 and i'm gonna go out on track and see how we get on um first it's just pretty much like like what you see on f1 pretty much like installation laps just to just to feel the initial feel of the car the only the only thing is with hard tires you probably got to do around three laps to actually get a sense of what the car feels like because in the first two laps your tires ain't up to temperature and your car's going to be all over the place it's going to be skittish but these laps you just sort of use to learn what temperature you want to run your tires normally on on the gt3 cars you want it to be about 26 psi that's the sort of psi you want your car to be at when it starts to get to 27 28 your car the handling starts to change it starts to become a bit skittish so we're going to go out on track and see how the car feels so yeah, it will be very hard to sort of judge how the car feels on, on what is cold tires effectively. So don't sort of get spooked by how the car feels straight out of the box because you might feel a bit skittish and stuff like that. But you really do have to wait to about third lap till the car actually warms up. Me personally, I've, I've done this enough time to sort of know within the first sort of lap or so whether the setup feels right or wrong but if you're not really used to setups then you you gotta sort of you know feel it out feel how the car feels after a few laps and then you'll know whether you need to change a lot of stuff or whether the base of the car feels pretty good sometimes it's, it's not all about changing everything sometimes you just gotta find the speed in the car that's already there and from there you can sort of work out what's best and what best to change for some reason my abs has gone off so 
Let's just put that back on. Check my automatic clutches off. Yep, I'm good to go. Like I said, this is something a little bit different. It's more of a sort of live commentary, just really to save me time from having to do a voiceover because it's just I've got races to practice for, I've got videos to make, and it's just it gets a bit tough trying to fit everything in. But this is probably just an easier way to just do that. So we're going to come around, start our first sort of flying lap with fuel and see how the car feels once the tyres are sort of getting to the temperature they need to get to let's see what we can do also you can see the rear brakes are still very cold so that's probably something we can also change and straight away you can see when you push it into the corners the rear brakes just can't handle it So let's see what the first flying lap will be. Still the rear brakes very cold. So 207 first lap. Second lap normally should be quite a bit quicker. So we've gone a bit wide on that lap. So almost identical laps. All right. So already what we noticed is definitely the rear brakes. I think the brake lights in generally are far too open. I'd even say probably put the rear brake ducts down to about 30 and they should heat up nicely and then um, Give you a bit more stability when braking in the braking zones. Um, despite the fact we got two on the front, we're still getting understeer, and that would probably come from more the suspension and uh, maybe making the rear a little bit stiffer and helping getting the car rotated a little bit more. So I'm going to put the front down a bit and raise the rear up a bit. Um, also, I don't know. I'm not sure we need all this camber. Um, obviously give the front more camber than the rear just to get that turn in. Um, I'm also going to put the anti-roll bars at the front down a bit and raise the rear up a bit and see if that helps us through that first sector. Um, I'm not going to go on to the dampers just yet. Also I wanted to shorten the gears. I believe a shorter gearbox might be beneficial around here. And other than that, Felt pretty good. I mean, I could drop the preload down to 100. That might give us a bit more turning through the fast corners. Hopefully, the car doesn't get too snappy. Um, could, normally, I wouldn't even run two on the front. I normally run sort of one five or something like that. I think if we if we can make the right changes, then we can get away with actual less front wing, and it still won't really make a difference to how the front end turns in because, as you can see through the fast corners, we were still getting understeer anyway. So. I will leave it at two for now and um, see how that feels and see what kind of tires we can get. So this is our first flying lap after the changes. And let's see how the car feels this time. You can see much better through turn one, not having to go down to first gear. Obviously ran a bit wide on the exit, so we've got that lap invalidated. And there's a lot of body roll through there. We'll probably afford to take off that two on the front wing now, I think. You can feel the car sliding. Let's see what this lap would have been. 
Now I've actually gone ahead and made a few changes and what I normally do is I take the take it off symmetric so you can sort of alter each tire individually. Um, I've just gone up a little bit on the, the front brake ducts because I thought that the front right was a little hotter than the front left and I want, just want to keep them in a nice range. Other than that we brought the brake pressure down to about 80% sorry 88% because normally when you're doing a race of distance after a while braking late um, high brake pressure will start to wear the tires more and more and more and as the race goes on it becomes harder and harder and harder to stop so I've actually brought the brake pressure down just a little bit so your tires won't get as worn and that effect won't come into play as soon um, we've actually added more toe more front and rear toe um, we've gone down I believe on the front anti-roll bar a little bit more and other than that I don't think we've changed too much um, yeah that's pretty much it and let's see what time we can do this time uh, let's see what we can manage obviously brakes very cool tyres not up to temperature yet but we'll try and see what we can do Actually, just went down to first to try and give us a little bit better acceleration. Didn't really work. Still managed to carry good speed. So despite not a great first corner, I still managed to be almost three temps up. Run a little bit deep in there. So even on the first lap with everything not up to scratch, still quite a bit quicker, 2056. Really got it sideways into turn one then. So just pressing pause and looking at the sector times that we've got there, I think that by far is our best, our best last sector we've done, but middle sector, we've been almost four temps quicker than that, and the first sector, I think fastest first sector I managed before, I think was a 32.4, so there is, there is, I mean, you could possibly get in the 204s around here with, um, with race fuel, but I mean, it have to be pretty much a perfect lap and you probably in a race you probably wouldn't want to drive the car that hard for sort of 20 25 laps because you will start to lose grip so so yeah i mean hopefully this setup will help you guys in the race trim i'll just quickly share the the setup that i'm using now and this is pretty much it um i i put the tire tire pressure on the right hand side down because what was happening is 
because of the the tight corners and how you brake for this circuit the right hand brake was heating up more than the left hand front brake so it was also heating up the tire so we put the tire pressure down just to keep it in the same range as the others um suspension wise pretty much been pretty similar the whole way through we've just added more front anti-roll bar just to make the car stiffer through that s section where it tended to roll just a little bit too much for my liking um dampers we've also gone pretty stiff and we've put on some front bump stop just to also keep the car stiff through that section because i feel like that's where i mean that's where after a little while i feel like the car would start to deteriorate a little bit through that section so we made it pretty stiff um haven't changed much here obviously if you're using if you're someone that uses traction control i wouldn't actually recommend to have traction control on 10 i think it bogs the car down a bit too much maybe if you're really struggling with traction maybe 15 or 20 and obviously this this will only work if you've got traction control switch on which i haven't so probably between 20 and 15 if you're not too confident on the traction i wouldn't have it at 10 i think it's just a bit too much slows the car down we've got the final drive on the shortest um, ratio possible and um, one thing to note is that actually um putting the ratio to the right is actually shortening the ratio and obviously from p cars one if you put it to the right it means that your ratio is to be longer but in this game the ratio is shorter you pull it to the right and that's what we've done there that's the shortest ratio you can get for the audi um on the differential we've just put the preload to 110 left the clutch at 4 power ramp at 75 coast at 25 and the viscous lock at 300 and yeah that's pretty much it um i'll also show you guys my force feedback settings um now i don't think it matters if i switch one i save over at this point because i'll just save over default because i think this is the setup that we're going to be going with from now on um control these are my force feedback settings for this car around this track so give that a try give the full setup a try see how you like it there's my configuration and yeah that's been me cryptic tmg I hope the setup helps you guys don't forget to like and subscribe also hit the notification bell peace